So there's a lot of qualities happening in this forest. There's a lot of trees. I could superficially label this as a forest that is made of primarily trees, that that's the main experience I can have here. And I could hold that label, take a hike, and only notice the trees. And if I only paid attention to the trees, what might I miss? What kind of experience of wholeness or fullness might I have if I only looked at the trees? Because that seems to be the most dominant thing happening here. What about the ground and all the diversity and experiences that might be happening on the ground? What about up at the top of the trees? In between the trees, all the critters? The view, of course, at the top. There's so much that I would miss if I only identified this as a hike of trees. That's what we do with the Enneagram. In fact, I used to help people find their primary type by through sometimes a process of elimination. So we would go around the Enneagram and figure out what types they definitely were not. Have you ever done this? So we go through and we sort of throw out, well, you're definitely not this type. You're definitely not that type. Not this one, not that one, not that one. Okay, so we're left with, you know, a couple types. And then we dive into those couple types to understand more. And now I see how that closes the door later on to so much self-exploration and self-realization and so much medicine when it comes to the essence of the types to begin your journey by eliminating a bunch of the types. You might even eliminate a whole center. Well, you will eventually eliminate two whole centers of your being as you hone in on your primary type. And then you focus on that primary type. I certainly did for 10 or 15 years and that work was very important. But I completely overlooked and buried the other aspects of myself through that process. And it was a beautiful process of awakening to begin to hold the possibility that those types might also be within me. Hi, I'm Tammy, and I founded the Enneagram of Essence to deeply explore the essence of the types and to see the Enneagram as a model for wholeness. So I'm out here immersed in nature, exploring what it has to teach us about the essence of the types. And in this video, I wanna talk about why I believe that you are more than a type. I believe this so deeply that I wrote a book about it. Hey, look at that, that beautiful, rainbowy book sitting on this stone bench here. Anyway, I want to read from the beginning of this book, from my foundation chapter, the section titled Wholeness and Embodiment. Are you more than a type? I have personally witnessed hundreds of Enneagram journeys and one recurring theme has always stood out. Everyone I've encountered resonates deeply with more than one type. There are numerous theories that try to explain this. Some open the door to our multifaceted nature, while others push us tighter into a singular type. Then there's the hot issue of mistyping, which has carved its own unique space attracting experts and tests designed to addressing it. Yet the simplest and most resonant explanation, we embody all nine types and the Enneagram is meant to illustrate our wholeness. This simple yet pivotal insight dawned on me through my inner experience. After studying the Enneagram for 15 years and working with a specific type, I began to truly recognize the other types playing out in my personality traits, perceptions, and motivations. 
and I observed this in others. Each client's story and every student's insight reflected this multifaceted reality. During my comprehensive year-long training, as we explore each Enneagram type in depth, students consistently find aspects of themselves in multiple, often all nine types. And why wouldn't they? At its core, the Enneagram with its three centers asserts our multifaceted nature. Think about it. Have you ever encountered someone lacking a head, heart, or gut? In my recent Enneagram program, three students experienced a true resonance with every type we explored. With each new type, they felt they had found their primary, only to reconsider as we delved into the next. It was a beautiful illustration of our multifaceted nature. By the end of the program, each participant had identified their primary type. One al aligned with type four, another with type seven, and the third with type six. However, their understanding didn't stop there. Using the Enneagram as a model for wholeness enabled them to go beyond merely identifying their primary type. Instead, they explored how aspects of each type manifest within them. In the Enneagram community, there's a common belief that identifying with various types is just a characteristic of type six or type nine, rather than a true experience of our multifaceted nature. The notion that Enneagram types are more prone to misidentifying with multiple types is a misunderstanding. Certain types may more readily recognize multiple types within, but this reality is not exclusive to them. I invite you now to pause and reflect on your own experience with any system that categorizes human nature. What does it feel like to consider that you hold more than one type? When I bring this up with people, their resonance and relief is often palpable, as though the wisdom of their direct experience has been validated. Why am I emphasizing this so much? My aim is not to complicate the Enneagram further with additional layers of insight and theory. It's quite the opposite. To move beyond insight and really flourish with the Enneagram, it's essential to embrace all the facets of your essence, each providing a distinct form of nourishment. Finding yourself in only one Enneagram type limits your opportunities for practical growth. The essence of each type acts as a universal nutrient, together forming a comprehensive resource for your whole self. Imagine your psyche and its underlying essence as a tapestry woven from nine distinct threads, each symbolizing a different Enneagram type. While some threads are denser, filling up more of the tapestry, all nine threads are present, con contributing to its complete design. Embracing your essence and wholeness is a tangible, physical journey. Let's delve into the science of embodiment to shed light on how somatic practices can turn insights of the Enneagram into a lived reality. That's the next section. If that appeals to you, check out my book, You Are More Than a Type. But one more thing I wanna address before we go. Well, I'm out here emphasizing our wholeness and I'm here to invite you to explore the deeply profound journey of discovering all the types within you and there'll be some that you have more of and some that you have less of and sometimes the ones that you have that you feel like you don't have at all turn out to be the most powerful influences sort of nutrients that you most need or qualities that really enhance your life that you were maybe lacking because they were so deep in your shadows or sometimes they end up being such a profound part of who you are that you didn't realize and I'll share that um, in my own process as we go along. But I also want to point out that I'm not here to say we don't have a primary type. I do find that an incredibly valuable process and I help people find their primary type all the time um, and support that process. So I'm not here to say it's one or the other. It's certainly both and um, I think I think you I think it's obvious that most of the Enneagram community is out there um, trying to help you eliminate the ones that you're not and hone in on the one that you are and it is a very alluring process and it can feel good to discover your primary type and there's some deep work there but <clears throat> the journey does not end by 
when you discover your primary type. And if it ends there, then you may be settling into a lifetime of knowing yourself in only one way and knowing, experiencing this life as a floating head or a floating gut or a floating heart. Until next time, thanks for joining me.